Good morning, my Okay, open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 6. By the way, it's got this little string here. You know what the string's for? Yes. Okay, let's use it. <laughs> Revelation chapter 6, starting in verse 12. And when he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sand became black as sackcloth. And the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone slave and free hid themselves in the caves among the rocks of the mountains. When calling to the mountains the rock and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the day, great day of their wrath has come, who can stand? This is political season here in the Philippines. We're going to hear a lot about justice. We're going to hear about justice for the poor. We're going to hear about justice for the oppressed. We are going to hear about justice. If you haven't heard the commercials yet, I have. Lenny Rebretto talks about justice, okay? She's not the only one going to hit it up. I wouldn't be surprised if ISCO or BBM or somebody else gets it as well, okay? That's just the reality. However, there is justice on the earth, but there's more than one kind. There's common justice. This is the justice that is meted out by men towards each other. And I really don't care who's doing the meeting or measuring of that justice. Somebody gonna get missed. And then there's the cry for justice. The poor, the oppressed, they will cry for justice and they will be. And they're just, their cry will not be met by earthly justice. And then there's the coming justice. There's the justice of Jesus Christ. And I promise everybody will be treated justly before that throne. Now I need each and every one of you to understand that justice on this earth is imperfect. Justice on this earth is incomplete, but it's not final. One day, God's justice will be finished through Jesus Christ. And as we study Revelation chapter 6, we need to remind ourselves what Revelation chapter 5 had to say. In Revelation chapter 5, they presented the scroll to the Lamb. And who is the Lamb? Well, the Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. And what is the scroll? The scroll is salvation of mankind that could be accomplished by none other than Jesus Christ. Salvation of mankind is something that only 
Jesus could do. The up opening of this scroll is the story of salvation through Jesus Christ. Keeping that in mind, we turn to Revelation chapter 6, when the first seal is opened. That justice on the earth includes common justice. The story of salvation begins where? In Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Go there, please. This is chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That's what God told Satan. By the way, has anybody here ever bruised their heel? It hurts, right? But would you rather have a bruise on your head? No. So the, we're speaking about the pre-incarnate. In other words, Jesus Christ before he came to earth. Go to Revelations chapter 19, verse 11. Revelations chapter 19, verse 11. Because the first horseman that we read about in the book of Revelations chapter 6 was the white horse. The white horse represents a king. Revelations chapter 19, verse 11. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, say it with me, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful and true, and in righteousness, he judges and makes war. Verse 12, his eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. By the way, diadems are a type of a crown, okay? I don't know if you knew that, but I'm going to tell you. Diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. Verse 13, he is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. Anybody think about John 1.1? 1, 1? I promise we'll get there. He has referenced scripture as using a bow. Is that significant? I don't know. Go to have, this is going to take you a minute. Go to Habakkuk. Three, chapter 3 and verse 8. Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 8. We got a map over here. Habakkuk, have your name up behind before Zephaniah. Nobody's up. Bucket, chapter 3, verse 8. Was your wrath against the rivers, or Lord? Was your anger against the rivers, or your indignation against the sea? When you rode on your horses, on your chariot, of salvation. Verse 9, you stripped the sheep from your bow, calling for many arrows. Salat, you split the earth with rivers. God is now and has always been the one true king. Go to Psalm 47 and 2. Psalm 47 and 2. Psalm 47 and 2. 
when the page is quit, I'll know everybody found it. For the Lord, the most high, is to be feared. Say this with me. A great king over all the earth. A what? A great king over all the earth. So when I tell you that God has always been the one true king, he has. Now, this is a great king that seeks to conquer. And the Messiah has a sword, he has bow, he has arrows, and he's going to ride. You're in Psalm 47 and 2. Go to the left to Psalm 45 and 3. Go a little bit to your left, Psalm 45, verse 3. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one. In your splendor and majesty, 40 verse 4, in your majesty, ride out victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Let your right hand teach you awesome deeds. And verse 5, your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, the people fall under you. After the fall of mankind from our place in Genesis, which would have been the Garden of Eden, the Godhead started working on redemption. And from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, there's only one story. And that story is the salvation of mankind through Jesus Christ to the glory of God the Father. The second horseman, he rides a red horse. And everybody knows that red is the color of blood. This rider, he takes peace from the world by using great violence. Now, we think about when the fall of mankind happened and we were removed from the Garden of Eden, how long did it take for us to see violence? It didn't take very long for Adam, the first man, and Cain and Abel. And there was jealousy between Cain and Abel and Cain killed Abel with violence. Didn't take very long. Now, 2,000, 3,000 years later, we all live in peace now, right? No, we don't. Violence is still here. However, what was one of the reasons for the flood? Go to Genesis chapter six, let's read verse 11. Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. Now the earth, wait, I'm ahead of you guys. Everybody there? Look at me when you are. Okay. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. With sin in the world, peace has been destroyed. Peace between humans. Peace between humans and God. Now the third horseman, he rides a black horse. And you might think that black is death, but it's not. Black is the color of hopelessness. Now, the one who sat on this horse had scales in his hands. And everybody seen the justice lady, right? What she got in her hand? Scales. Right and wrong. Balance the scales. Scales are used throughout the world to represent 
justice. Go to Proverbs 1611. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11. Just balance. And the scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. Now, back in Revelation chapter 6, there is a voice that talks about fair prices for commodities. But you and I, we cannot have true justice by simply trying to be fair to each other. Many people in this life are dealt with unjustly and they die without justice in the world. Now, they talk about fair prices for a commodity and they talk about the right scale, right? Has everybody here been to the Palenque? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, so if you order one kilo of I don't know, dragon fruit. You always get one kilo, right? And they always make sure that once they sell you, when they sell you potatoes, they will only sell you the good ones, right? Right? That's, that's how it works, isn't it? Or that's how it should work. Should work. If you're not careful, will you get shorted a potato or two? And when you peel them, will you find out that they are brown on the inside? You will, right? And they, because that's human nature. Many people, that includes you and I, will be dealt with unjustly in this world. Now, there's a fourth horseman, and he rides a pale horse. And the pale Watch this. The pale color represents the paleness of skin at death. Everybody here ever been to a funeral? Yes? Okay. You notice that when they have them in the casket, they have on makeup? Do you know why? Has anybody here ever seen a dead person without makeup? They're very pale. Trust me when I say this. They are very pale. The reason when you go to the funerals, you see them with makeup on is because the mortician is attempting to conceal how pale they really are. This pale color of the four horsemen, it represents the paleness of that death. Death rides the pale horse and Hades follows him. The fourth, the pale color, death rides the horse Hades follows him. Go to Revelations chapter 20, verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, Say this with me, according to what they had done. According to what you have done. These death and Hades are given a power over a quarter of the earth. That's one out of every four to kill with the sword, to kill with hunger, to kill with beast, and the net result is death. Go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. 
Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. That's verse 12. Scroll on down to 14. Yet death reigned from Abraham to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one that was yet to come. Death came to us through one man. Salvation came through one man. Death came through Adam. Salvation came through Jesus Christ. Now, we see, by the way, the world loves Revelations chapter 6, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And they're going to make up all kinds of stories. The problem is we're only limited in what we can tell by what scripture tells us. We see represented in these four horsemen a system of common justice on the earth. It's justice that is imperfect, meaning not perfect. What the earth needs is not common justice, but uncommon justice. What the earth needs is not common generosity, but uncommon generosity. What the earth needs is not common courtesy, but uncommon courtesy. The earth, Revelation 6, 9 through 11, is going to cry out for justice. The fifth seal is open, and we see under the altar of sacrifice the souls of the martyrs. These martyrs were killed for the word of God, and they are the ones that Jesus talks about in Luke chapter 11, verse 49. Go there. Luke chapter 11, verse 49. Therefore, also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute. Verse 50, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation. 51, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. The martyrs of God are crying out for justice. The system of common justice, the justice of this world, did not avenge them. They want the Lord to avenge their deaths. And they're asking a question, how long? How long, O oh Lord, will it be? Go to Psalm 74.10. Psalm 74, verse 10. How long, O God, is the foe to scoff? Is the enemy to revile your name forever? The Lord gives them an answer. The Lord provides them with white robe. Let's go to Revelations chapter 7, verse 14, and see what he says. Revelations chapter 7, verse 14.
I said to him, sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. The blood of Christ cleanses those that are under the old law, not just the law of Christ. Go to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Yes, we know under the new covenant, the blood of the lamb cleanses us. But it's not just the new covenant. It's the old covenant also. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Read it with me, church. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who were called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under. Say it again. Under the first covenant. Jesus Christ did not only provide a way of redemption for you and I, but he provided a way of redemption for those who died under the first covenant. They, these saints are told to rest a little while. You're in Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 9, so then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. The number of the fellow servants who had died and their brethren to be killed was not yet complete. It was not yet time for final justice. However, coming justice. There is a coming justice. The sixth seal is open and the earthly and heavenly events transpire. There is an earthquake. The sun becomes black. The moon turns to blood. Go to Joel. Joel 2.31. Take you a minute. Find it. Joel chapter 2, verse 31. <laughs> Sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. That's a prophecy, and the prophecy is not yet fulfilled. The stars fall on the earth like figs during a storm. By the way, do they actually have fig trees here in the Philippines? Okay, uh, a fig tree is a not real tall, maybe 12 or 15 feet tall, kind of a wide tree with low-hanging branches and lots of fruit. Uh, if a baggy outcome, if you picture a wide, low-hanging tree covered in fruit and a big storm comes by, where's all the fruit going to be? On the ground, right? That's what they're talking about. When they reread Revelations chapter 6, it's like what happened to the fig tree when the gale or baggy owl came is all the fruits on the ground. Well, that's an example that they're using to describe the stars. 
He also tells us that the sky is rolled up like a scroll. Isaiah 34 and 4. Go there. Isaiah 34 and 4. All the host of heaven shall rot away, and the skies roll up like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall as leaves from the vine, like leaves falling from a fig tree. Now, I have a question for you. If you're living in the earth and all the stars start hitting the ground, are you and the blood moon turns to blood and the sky gets rolled up like a scroll? This is a divine change, and divine justice is about to be unleashed. Are you gonna be happy about it? Probably not, because as we're told in Revelation chapter 6, all people try to escape powerful, the kings, great men, rich men, commanders, mighty men. Wait a minute. The lowly, all slaves. The common, all free. Nobody, absolutely nobody is exempted. Final justice is coming one day. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. The pages quit. Everybody's there. Okay, church, read this with me. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. God does care how you behave, and we will all answer. For our behavior and the salvation of Jesus Christ covers us, but we have to walk like we belong to Jesus Christ. And we read Revelation 6 where they say to the mountains and the rocks, they say, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. That's the Lamb of God. We spoke about it, the Lion and the Lamb. The Lion of Judah is Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. Has anybody here ever seen a baby lamb? No, okay. Trust me when I say this, they are not frightening, okay? Has anybody here ever been to the zoo and seen an angry lion? Trust me, they are frightening, okay? Uh, just trust me on them. They're big and they're scary. And the Lamb of God, which is frightening to no one, and the Lion of Judah are all Jesus Christ. Go to Hosea chapter 10, verse 8. Hosea chapter 10. Verse 
per se. High places of Amon, the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. Thorn and thistle shall grow up on their altars, and they shall say to their mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. So who is going to release divine justice? The one who sits on the throne, the lamb. No one will be able to stand against his wrath. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes again, he will come with a vengeance. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse seven and eight. Read it with me, church. And to grant relief to you who are afflicted, as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, verse 9, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Anybody want to be on, on God's side then? I think we all want to be on God's side on that day. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. No, we got some folks that call themselves Christians and say you can become a Christian and you guarantee your salvation and live any way you want to. They say that, but let's read what the Hebrews writer has to say in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 and 27. Read it. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversary. Live any way you want. I think not. However, however, we need to bear in mind that Jesus Christ became a curse for you, for me, for us, for all people, for the church, universal, for the people who do not accept. He died for all of them so that if they do accept, they can have an eternity. Go to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Galatians 3 and 13. Galatians 3 and 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone hanged on a tree. Christ became our curse. God is going to have his final justice. Justice 
For the earth, there is common justice, and common justice just doesn't get it done. There's a cry for justice, and God is going to avenge the death of his saints. And then there's a coming justice. Jesus will bring this justice when he returns. There's only two ways for God to have justice upon a sinful man. And that choice is yours. Either you accept the offer to identify with Jesus and you let the punishment that Jesus already took cover your sins or or you keep for yourself the punishment of your own sins. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death and Hades will have power over a quarter of the earth to kill with the sword. We know what it means. We know what's going to happen. We know that each of us want an eternity in heaven. If you are in need of prayers for jobs, for the things that 